bedside letter. A pushkin for my adolescent years, bound in a gold cover, to soothe the puberty years. It didn't induce that young verse a kind of sorrows, but rather saved a youth from the backwater country. In reciting love poems, the rural urban gap was bridged, filling the gulf between hearts. These verses, with summer insects chirping at the edge of town, chimed together for evening prayers, allowing me to calmly study the stylish girls, even if they were the captain's daughters. I became the gentleman in that book, prolonging a duel which would not exist. What far off memory now, a red thumbprint in a hundred years of solitude. By the weeping willows of the Yingxi River, I inhaled the sweet smell of romanticism. Like mud pecked away by swallows, or low eaves delivered to the iron gut of the excavator, those infinitely disappearing rice paddies replaced by modern housing, a dense population stacked into dwelling cubes until downtown youths no longer believed in poetry from Russia, nor even taught kindly about the adolescents dipped in Russian Romanticism. Some twenty years later, you, a Pushkin go-between, carried me from far away back home, to those displaced, stowed-away pillows and blankets. As my lips echoed the verse into local dialect, I was unaware you were here too, in your lonely adolescent years, without even a similar comfort. You sat in the dimly lit editor's office, a ferryman who delivered that bright light to me. For this is a time for tears. The lonelier we are, the more potent is poetry to enchant our bleak life, to defy the thought that we are destined for mediocrity. In the cold, in exile, you never extinguish the flames. And we, in times when conformity rules, will be a swift sword made of bronze, bursting out a piercing shine to guard against amnesia.